بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلما نسوا ما ذكروا به فتحنا عليهم فتحنا عليهم أبواب كل شيء حتى إذا فرهوا مما أوتوا وخذناهم بغتة أخذناهم بغتة فإذا هم مبلسون سرق الله العظيم Pleasant Assalamu alaikum to each and everyone in Subrati Masjid community. I think this is my second time, second time coming here. So I had a whole week to learn the route to come here. And um, Maulana Jamil, he had to draw a map for me. Mufti Jamil had to draw a map for me. So I'm like, yeah, is a good artist. Joy and things, alhamdulillah. It's strange, though, that if we invite people to um, a discussion on how to make investments and how to make money, if you invite people to the masjid hall and you see you have a, a top economist coming to the uh, masjid, and he wants to tell you where to put your money to make the most money out of. You, you invest $10 and you're going to make $100. The masjid halls will be flooded. Masjid halls will be flooded. But from the moment you invite people to listen and learn about religion, they don't have time for that. And we are Muslims and we are following the greatest religion and we are following the greatest Nabi and we have Quran and you know we are guided people. But when it comes to religion, our attitude is very staggering. And when it comes to dunya, we are always in the front line. Strange. Today is that that's not the topic today. I just wanted you know, to say something. Because anywhere you go, it's the same problem. Anywhere you go. Some people even leave out Jumma. So some people even sacrifice Jumma uh, for the sake of their jobs. They sacrifice Jumma. Today's topic is about Haya. Or what Islam says about uh, Haya or modesty. Or what is modesty or haya in Islam? I mean, any way you want to say it, it's all the same. Haya in Islam, what Islam says about haya. The word haya has a multiple meanings. The word haya can be is commonly translated as modesty. Or shame. Or bashfulness. Or decency. Or self-respect. Or shyness. I mean, again, any meaning that you want to give to it along these meanings, it's all good and well. Because when you talk about haya, you're speaking about modesty. But this quality is such an important quality in the life of a person. And I am saying a person because even a non-Muslim is supposed to have this quality of decency within him or herself. So it's not only a quality confined to a Muslim and you say, well, I'm a Muslim, I'm a decent person. Because there are a lot of Muslims today worse than non-Muslims. So it's a quality which protects or safeguards a person's morality, character. It's like that security system in you that activates it is that quality in an individual that ignites that uneasy feeling or feelings which is accompanied by embarrassment, which is caused by one's fear of being exposed, 
of some indecent act. That quality of modesty. You know you do something wrong. You're so ashamed. You are so frightened that people will come to know about it. That quality of modesty and shame and decency protects you from that. When something comes to you of an indecent nature, it activates. And something tells you inside of you, it says, don't get involved in that boy. Remember, he's a Muslim. People watching here. We just say that. We just say, people watching here. You think we just say, boy, Allah watching here, boy. <laughs> you know, people normally, they might be like this. Nobody don't do so. And we look around to see if somebody's looking at us. So if nobody's looking, then you do it, but you forget. Allah is al-Basir. So it's that quality in you that protects you. It protects you. See, the word haya itself is derived from al-haya. You know, you hear haya to dunya, the life of this world, it's, uh, it's derived from that. It's derived from the word al-haya, which means life. So it's as though a person without this quality of haya, and I will, I will use the word, you know, but it, it has these various meanings. I'll repeat the meaning, you know, like modesty and shame and shyness and decency and morality and all these things, which is quite a, a good topic to speak around this, around this time, you know, because we are fast approaching, well, you know what season? The Bacchanal season, right? So it's a solid topic. To, as a reminder for myself and your good self. Sometimes you're caught up in a situation, you know, Christmas time come and gone. And you had many Muslims hanging up, you know, um, in the workplace, hanging up balloons, and it's the season to be jolly and merry. And many Muslims will go to Christmas parties and, well, um, the, the punch not getting you drunk, so I'll take a little thing. The punch, you know, they have. Punch? Well, I don't know the, the, the punch or cream, right? And they, they do that. They do that. They take part in all these uh, activities and they are very, I would not say unmindful. I'm not going to use the word unmindful. They are mindful of what they are doing, but they still do it. They know what they are doing. It's improper, un-Islamic. It's against the principle of, principles of Islam. But because they don't want to look as, you know, the black sheep in the office, or, you know, anything along that line. I know too much about, you know, names and stuff like that. But they don't want to look like the outcast or the outsider. They participate in it to be, you know, all-inclusive. Everybody can say, well, he's a part of the crew. So it's that quality. If it's missing in your life, it is so connected to the word haya, which means life. If it's the, the quality is missing in a person's life, it's as though or like that person is without life. He's like a dead person. He's like a dead person. It is that quality which is not only uh, a quality is demonstrated in action, but it's also an internal quality. So haya, which is sometimes translated as modesty, it's a quality which frees you from being indecent. Because the norms of society today demands a certain quality in an individual because of peer pressure. You just have to fall off on the side and join the bandwagon. If you don't cuss, you're not a part of it. If you don't go and party, we don't want you hanging around with you too, you're too pious. 
Erotical I'll drink every now and again. By way you bring that man here for boy. So do he can't lie with me. Peer pressure. It, so it's that quality that does not you see when you when we talk about uh, modesty. I mean what, what are you really talking about? Haya does not only deal with an action, but it deals with, yes, your behavior. Haya also deals with the manner in which you dress. Haya deals with a person's speech. Haya is all inclusive. It is not only an external act, but it's something internal in an individual. It's something internal. So it does not only deal with the way you carry about yourself, you know what I mean? Like, introduce a person and um, you say, well, this is so-and-so, this is brother so-and-so, and you say, you know, like, hee-hee-hee-hee. You know, and the person say, you know, um, well, he real shine. It's a shallow meaning. That's a very shallow meaning to what Haya really is. It deals with your manners. It deals with the way you carry about yourself in your home, in public, at your workplace, on the streets, in the masjid. Well, today we're fighting and looking at masjid, so anything goes. We worse than Jerusalem. In Aqsa, they might still allow you to go in, but in Trinidad, they will lock up the masjid. Send police for you. It's the manner in which you speak. It's the way you dress. The company that you keep. The places that you hang out. Everything that you do is a reflection of your modesty. Everything that you do. Everything that you do. So it's not confined to one thing. It's not confined to one thing. You use that and say, well, yeah, he's a real modest individual. Yeah, he's a real shy individual. That's a real decent individual. It's everything about you. How important is it in the life of a believer? We're living in a time, as I mentioned earlier on, where not to cuss or bust a few cuss every now and again is a bad thing. So in the home you have parents sometimes cuss up each other. In school, students cussing up each other. It's not confined to one thing. This quality, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says about Haya, he says Haya, the quality of decency, this quality of modesty, this quality of shyness, this quality of haya in a person's life. The Prophet says, haya and iman, it goes hand in hand together. He says, if haya leaves, iman leaves. If the quality of modesty leaves, your Iman leaves. It leaves. Now you can do whatever you feel to do. It is that great quality that is connected to your Iman. And dear brothers and sisters, without Iman, you lose. That's why the Prophet Wasallam he says, if you have no shame. If you have no shame, do what you want. Go ahead and do what you want. And you look around the streets, you look in the town, you look in the malls, in the schools, and that's what's happening. People doing what they want to do. People acting how they want to act. People will dress how they want to dress. They will behave how they want to behave. Because that quality is lacking in their hearts. I'm not talking about non-Muslims. 
So don't say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Muslims. I'm talking about Muslims. If you are a Muslim, if you are a Muslim, you would advertise for beers, carry black beers or something like that. Something is wrong with you. If you as a Muslim could lime in pubs and go party in Zen, something is wrong with you. If you as a Muslim could go and lime in the bars because of your friend and drink, consume alcohol, then something is wrong with you. The Prophet says, when your decency leaves you, when your modesty leaves you, when the shame and shyness, it leaves you, then your iman follows with it. It also leaves you. So now you can do whatever you want to do. And that is what is happening to the Muslim world. That's what's happening. But we have this attitude with saying, that's a one-time thing, man. That's a one-time thing. You know what? It's just, a, it's just today. It's just now. It's just for, it's just a line tonight. My partners and them, you know. How we gonna look like I tell them, you know what I mean? That one time could be the last time. You ever hear about people who say are going for the last dip? They go by the seat of bed and they say, boy, I'm going for the last dip. And that was really the last dip. You had to look for them and pull them out, and next day was the janaza. It was really the last step. Just, just one night of spending, that is it. Yeah, well, my, well, me, your last night. What if at that time, your appointment came with the angel of death, and he snatches your soul from you? He takes it away from you. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? When your higher when your modesty and your decency leaves you, your iman also leaves. What state are you dying in? How important this quality is it is for a believer. Sometimes we are caught up in situations. Sometimes, yes, we are caught up in situations where you need to exercise that level of decency. And you tell yourself at that time, it's just a one-time thing. It's just a one-time thing. Remember the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, what did he say? When your decency, when your modesty, when your shyness, when your uh, haya, it leaves you, your iman leaves you. It leaves you. It is a quality which Allah loves. It's a quality which Allah loves. And as a Muslim, you love what Allah loves. Isn't that so? He's our creator. Allah is the one who returns our soul back to us in the morning. Allah is the one who sends the air for us to breathe. You become ill. Allah is the one who gives you back your health. You're in difficulties. Allah is the one who relieves you of that difficulties. Allah is the one who created you. Allah is the one who protects you and takes care of you. There is so much that's going on on the land. So much that go, that go, that's going on in the land. And you are praying, you are making dua to Allah. In broad daylight, people just vanishing off the face of the earth. In broad daylight, it's happening. In full view of the public, it's happening. But Allah is protecting you. Allah is the one who's protecting you. The burglar proof not protecting you. Because now they're walking with a blue torch. And if that can't work, then they will unscrew your roof and pass through the roof and come for you. I don't know if it ever happened down here, but it happens up there. So who is really protecting you? Who is the one really protecting you? What causes what causes this quality to leave an individual? What's the reason that this quality of modesty and shyness, 
self-respect, what causes it to leave an individual? What you look at. What you look at. Today, you know why a lot of our youngsters have no sense of decency in them? Again, Muslims are talking about it. They have no sense of decency in them. And sisters, don't get confused. Eh? Don't feel it's only young men are talking about it. Eh? Young girls also. Young girls also. They have no sense of decency in them. Why? It's because first we are what you are involved in, what you're looking at. If you have man pa sitting and watching a movie with a set of love making and sex on the movie going on, and you have the child sitting right there looking at mommy and papi, looking at this. You know what the child says? Well, if it's good for them and they're doing nothing, and I'm right here sitting, then hey, it's a free for all. You understand? When you have, you are sitting looking at movies with cussing going on, or you have a mother and father having a cuss out, and it has become quite a common trend among Muslims to bust a cuss every now and again. And something slip off your hand, oh, what you? You're driving on the road, I'm a yeah, bad drive, you had a cuss. You go and you had to stand up too long in a KFC line, you cuss. Everything now we cuss. So if mommy and papi having a cuss out, and the child is looking on and saying, well, this has to be love. If this is the way ma and pa expresses their love to each other, well, hey, when I become a big man, or a big woman, I got a cuss out of my wife or my husband. Because I saw my mother and father having a cuss out and it was quite okay with them. If they can use that language, then you know what? It must be right. It must be right. What they see ignites that spark in their heart to do what they see. They want to do that. The way you dress. You have many Muslim adult mothers who dresses very indecent. They were in all these batty rider shorts. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what comes out of my mouth when you say I'm talking. Huh? I, I'm, I do not apologize. Gone were the days when you will dust these things under the carpet. Gone were the days. You're living in the real world. Many Muslim women dress very vulgar. Mini skirts. And wait, it doesn't stop being it. They will go to the stores and buy these short skirts and fitted nibble breaker jerseys for their daughters. I mean, what is the objective of that? To have somebody puffing and panting? Let it catch you in a dark alley, they're going to have you puffing and panting. Where does it start from? You know, Imam is here. Sometimes a person will come and say, Imam, I see that girl I like the um, I wait to put a good word in for me now. And he lived a corrupt life. Rare you will see him in the masjid. You go to invite him by his, to the masjid by his home and he's peeping through the curtain. He don't have time for salah and jumma and fasting and ramadan and but time to get married, you go on by the imam and say, you could um, I know you know the father real good. You know you could um, you know, tell them now how Israel come to Masanding. 
Don't lie for nobody, you know. Right. Because it will turn around and bite you. How you dress. How our women dress. And also our men dress. When, you see, when Islam speaks about powder and dress for a woman, you say, well, look here, I have on the hijab. And you're wearing on a fitted jeans and a tight blouse. No, sisters. It also means you dress in such a way that your figure is not seen. That is not about a hijab. It's about your body. It's complete covering decently. Men too. We in the pencil pants era. See people walking around with pencil pants. Muslim boys walking around with their pants hanging down half their backside. What is the objective of that? What are, you really, what are you really promoting? Think about it. You are Muslim and you're walking around with your pants halfway down your backside and showing everybody what? What is it? Is a freak show? Is it a, a free show? A special offer? What it is? I mean, think about it. What are you promoting? What exactly are you promoting? You go to the masjid, People will come to masjid sometimes with the most ridiculous set of clothing and their pants are falling down and they all start be holding up their pants and it's falling down and you go down and it's subdued and you see all their behind, it's exposed, but you come to pray. When they get married, they go on that. You went away on that. How you dress, how you dress, it destroys your morality. The company that you keep, if the parents keep the company of corrupt people, if they keep the company of people who are involved in corrupt deeds, then the child will grow a liking for the same. I mean, look at it. If you as a Muslim don't ever come to mosque, you expect the child to start coming to mosque? Eh? There's a miracle child. If the father, because you see the child looks at the action of the father, don't you see when you're praying at home sometimes, the, 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 your daughter, small, and the son, they come and they, Allahu Akbar, and they keep going up and down, and they're doing it, and they will say, Daddy, 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 watch me. Because the child is looking at the parent and they are learning by looking. So if they see the parents are involved in righteous deeds, they too will be involved in righteous deeds. If from a young and tender age you teach them to be charitable, they will grow up with that quality in their hand of being charitable. If you teach a child self-respect and to be respectable to other people, they will grow up with that quality of being respectable to other people. You train them how to dress. They will grow up dressing proper. You teach them to speak proper. And what, the, you know your language? Not construction language, eh? Decent speech. Decent language. Then they will grow up knowing how to speak proper. Decent with decency. If you keep the company of unrighteous and corrupt people, then they will grow up with that same liking that they will want to keep. They, they, it's like they are angled to that. They are inclined to keep in that kind of company. What you eat also. So the Muslims, Muslims don't care what they eat in the Muslims eating pork today. If it's falling anybody garden, pick it up. See, recording it, it can play all over. Muslims eat pork today. You know, sometimes you're going through the market and the 
you pass by the meat place and a man go watch you and say, hey, hey you're a Muslim? You're looking like a, a practicing Muslim. But you know how much Muslims just come by me and buy pork? Say, really? Say, yeah, you say, but they don't, they don't take it there. They just sell me, bring it behind there and just give them it. Come behind the wall and give me it. Nobody are watching them, you know? Nobody can see them. No, nobody sees them. Nobody is seeing them. Bring it behind the wall, right? What you eat? If you grow up eating the haram, your body is nourished by haram. Your ibadah is not accepted. Eating the halal is extremely important for your iman. Extremely important for you as a Muslim with iman to retain that secrecy of iman. You need to ensure what you eat is pure. It's halal. Pure halal. But we're going to restaurant tonight. Where are we going? What the servant? You don't care? You ask the waitress, I'm a little safe halal meat? Um, I think so, you know. Right, 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 halal. I didn't know what think so was halal. We have to also be conscious about what we eat. These are things just few things which will cause the destruction of a person's morality. It brings down your morality. It destroys that decency in you. Now, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? If you have no shame, no morality, no decency, no haya in you, you could go ahead and do what you want. You could go ahead and do what you want. And you know what? We are seeing that daily. We are seeing this daily in the Ummah. How many Muslim youths are there in our community? You know, I ask you this answer. I'm just asking you know, a, a question. Now. I mean, just think about it. How many Muslim youths are there in our community? Where are they? How many Muslim young men and young women are there? But where are they now? Where are they? Are they punctual in the masjid? Or are they punctual somewhere else? What are they involved in? How much of their Islam are they practicing? How much of salah they are performing? You know, we sacrifice. You know, when a child learns what is important and what's not? You see, when they start to go to school, and we show a greater amount of consideration for sending them to learn lessons and making sure they, go le sure they go lessons. And you all wake them for the fajr in the morning. From early they learn what's important and what's not. So they grow up with an attitude. Well, if I miss my fajr, no big deal. If I don't pray, well, no big deal. I don't see my mother and father praying. So it has to be unimportant. Where are they? You tell me we don't have plenty of youths in our community. You tell me we don't have a lot of Muslims in our community. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so where are they? Where are they? I'm not saying uh, a lack of decency is a result of that enough. But the question I'm asking, your company, your company. The Prophet Sallallahu says the most beloved places to Allah on the face of the earth are the masajid. The most beloved places to Allah. Who is saying that? The Prophet Sallallahu is saying that. He says the most beloved places to Allah on the face of the earth are the masajid. When you come to the house of Allah, you are a guest of Allah. You are a guest of Allah who came to his home, knocking on his door, seeking something. And never does a guest of Allah 
knocks on the doors of mercy and he's turned away empty-handed. Never does a guest who comes to the houses of Allah, who comes knocking, seeking a favor from Allah, and he's turned away empty-handed. Never. But you find the bazaars are filled. You find the night line is well attended. You find making a line by Starbucks is well attended. You find going C3. Where's the new one come out? Arshad, where's the new one? Oh boy, innocent, innocent. I just, I just teach him, so that's why I call him. I don't know anybody else's name. That is why I call nobody. Right? What do, do they not if I call your name, right? Cameras. Hey, you go flash here. Yeah. You understand? They have a new one. They have a new one. You understand? Huh? Yeah, in South Park. You know, Lyman and South Park. Hey, it's a Lyman and South Park. Let me go. You don't care if they miss their Isha Salah. You don't care if they miss their Maghrib Salah. The boy need a break. The girl need a break. Let her go ahead now. Whole week they're going to school. You don't care if their misses, their Asr, their Maghrib, and their Isha. They will come back late at night. And guess what? They're tired from Lyman. Give them a break now. Time for Fajr. So they're always on a break. Always on a break. You are teaching them what's important and what's not important. You see, that will turn around and bite you very bad on the day of Qiyamah. It's coming. How does a person, morality, becomes destroyed from their life? You wonder how it goes away. There are so much things, so much that contributes to morality and uh, immorality and indecency and shamelessness in a person. So many things that are staring us in our eyes. So many things. And some, it's happening in the Muslim Ummah. It is happening to our Muslim young men, to our Muslim young women. Check their phones. Not, not yours, eh? Check their phones. They go to sleep late at night. I mean, you just pick up their phone and you might flip. So much cussing, so much indecency, so much pornography. They are on the net late at night. What are they working on night shift? Late at night, they are on their phones, chit-chatting with this one, chit-chatting with that one. But they can't get for Fajr because the internet time was important. You see people today walking around with a phone, like the phone is a security or some kind of thing like that. And you notice how people walk around with a phone in their hand? You know why? They want to, the flams in. What do I have? That is, why, that is why you walk around with the phone in your hand. No sense of morality in their hearts. The Prophet he says, if you don't have that, then go ahead and do what you want. And that's exactly what's happening. It has left their hearts. Decency has left their hearts. This quality of haya has left their hearts. So they are doing what they want to do. But they are the cause for it leaving. Allah did not take it away from them. You wanted that. You wanted to lie there. You wanted to go to that party. You wanted to go to that cinema. You wanted to hold that girl's hand. You wanted to, to lie with that boy. You wanted to do that text. You want to plan that party. Allah didn't cause that to happen. You choose to do that on your free will. You choose to do that. And it contributed. It contributed to this quality leaving your hearts. It contributed to that. And these things continue to happen. And it goes on and on. 
until you face the consequences of it. Until you face the consequences of it. What time is Asia? 28? Is Azan? Okay. You don't tell me to take how much time I want in it because I'll go in the morning. Probably walk with breakfast and thing. Ah, what time? Half seven is Azan. Okay. I will finish just now. Okay. I will finish just now, inshallah. These things continue to happen until we have to face the consequences of it. You see, let me tell you what happens. There is a new phenomenon that's going around. Amongst our younger ones, not our fathers and our grandfathers and grandmothers. It's amongst the younger ones. And it has become quite a hit. I'm sure you've heard it before. I mean, it's, it's just spreading all over the Muslim world. Not only in Trinidad, but you hear it a lot. And this phenomenon is you can't judge me, no. Only Allah can judge me. Who is you to judge me? So a person will continue in their acts of immorality. And when you remind them about their duties, they say, who is you to judge me? You don't know why my heart? Only God could judge me. And that is taking the hearts of the Muslim by storm. It is a spreading all over. You tell people about their actions, who is you to judge me? You ask Muslims, brother, just be honest. Can you please be honest? Brother, you're judging people. I mean, is honesty a good quality or a bad quality? You like people to be dishonest with you? Is indecency a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. They could shake your head and say yes or something like that. It's, it's a bad thing. It is a bad thing. But when you admonish people regarding these things, the first thing they turn around and say to you, who is you to judge me? Only Allah could judge me. Only God could judge me. You know what the first people to use this statement? The first set of people to use this statement were the hip-hop artists. The first set of people to use the statement of who is you to judge me, you cannot judge me. Only God can judge me. And the Muslims, accustomed to this, came up right along behind them and just eat up all that and started to use this. Umar radiallahu ta'ala, you know what he used to tell the people? He used to tell the people, I will judge you by what I see of you. He says, if I see the actions of the unbelievers on you, that is how I will judge you. If I see the actions of the believers on you, that is how I will judge you. He said, but I will judge you by what I see of you. Think a man could commit murder and go in front of the judge and say, who is you to judge me? You can't judge me. Only God could judge me. Man, they will throw you so fast and call jailer. It's a ridiculous statement. Of course, we can't judge anybody. Yeah. Okay. But don't cry that song, you know. Because on the day of Qiyamah, you will really be crying. This has captivated the hearts of people. And this is why they will continue doing what they are doing. Continue in their acts of negligence. Allah Rabbul Azza, he says in Quran, Allah Rabbul Azza warns us in Quran, he says, وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ Ma kanu ya'maloon. Shaitan, you know what he does? Shaitan, he beautifies their actions. He beautifies their actions for them. So they do it once. And they do it a second time. You know, but when, when people do it once, it's like this. Let me see what will happen. When you don't see anything happening, you say, did nothing happen? 
There's all this talk about destruction and punishment and lightning bolts striking me and telling me to do something. Okay? All that is a bunch of fairy tale. So you do it a second time and you get away. And you do it a third time. That's what you like? Is that what you like? Shaitan beautifies it for you. And a love grows in the heart for disobedience of the most merciful. Now you love disobeying your Lord. And the thing that you love doing, you become inclined to it. You become inclined to doing it. So you find the actions of that individual, you find acts of disobedience becomes very easy. And you look at that person and you say, how we could do that, boy? He is looking at you and say, hmm. oh, I'm so pious, boy. It's easy for him to do. He loves doing it because shaitan has beautified it for him. He beautifies it for them. It makes them feel that it is quite okay. People who make the, make the statement by saying only God can judge me. It's an excuse. It's an escape, escape, escape route for them. So that people can leave them alone to continue in their acts of transgression. They want people to leave them alone. They don't want anybody to tell them about anything. It's an excuse for people who, for people who make the statement of only God could judge me. Who are you to judge me? It's an excuse for them not to learn the right thing. Because you know what? If I learn the right thing, then I have to practice more and I don't want to be no pious man. I don't want to be any pious man. You like what's going on with your life. You like how your life is going. That is one from amongst the greatest deception of shaitan. It is from amongst the greatest deception of shaitan. People who commit indecency, who have reached to such a level that there is no sense of morality in their hearts and all sense of shame has left their hearts. When they commit these acts, they tell themselves, you see no punishment that coming down upon me. Shaitan fools them. It is from amongst the greatest deceptions of Shaitan that he deceives you. You know what is the meaning of Shaitan? The word Shaitan means deceiver. It means liar. He lies to you, making you believe that you have gotten away. He lies to you. He makes you feel that you know what I'm doing? Hey, everything is okay. Everything is fine. Nobody knows. Yeah, nobody knows. Nobody knows? You mean nobody really knows? Yeah, Allah knows. When this sense of morality leave you ha your heart, you reach to such a level that you become comfortable and these acts of indecency and immorality and lewdness and shamelessness until that day when Allah will strike you sudden with a punishment. Allah will seize you suddenly with a punishment. You became happy in the disobedience of Allah. You became comfortable disobeying Allah. Allah allows you. Why? Why will Allah loves you, allows you, allow you? Why is that? You know why? Because that is what you love. If you love worshiping Allah, Allah makes worshiping easy for you. If you grow the love for tahajjud, then waking up for tahajjud becomes very easy. Ask, ask brothers who are punctual in tahajjud salah. Ask them. Say, boy, how will I can wake up like you? Say, brother, it's easy. It's easy. You know, all you have to do is, you know, wake up a few nights and you grow accustomed to it. And the love for praying, it enters your heart. It captivates the heart. You, the sweetness enters your heart. You are alone with no distraction 
in the quiet of the night, worshiping your Lord in peace with no interference, no noise. In the quiet of the night, you say, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. And Allah listens to your call. And you raise your hands and you say, Oh my Lord, help me. And Allah listens to your call. And the sweetness enters your heart for dua. If you love worshipping your Lord, Allah makes worshipping easy for you. He makes it easy for you. If you love lewdness and you love immorality and you become inclined to that and you are happy to participate in shameless deeds, then you know what happens? Allah says, that's where you love? That's where you like? You don't love worshipping me? You don't love worshipping me? Oh, my servant, you don't like that? That's what you like? Okay, no problem, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So disobeying Allah, you become very comfortable in the disobedience of Allah. It becomes very easy for you. You are happy. You are happy in the disobedience of your Lord at that time when you become comfortable in acts of disobedience to Allah, Allah will seize you with a severe punishment. When you are totally unaware, you are happy and you are comfortable. Continue going to the parties, and you probably, you have plenty parties these days, you know. You have parties all over the place. Army fat, police fat, inclusive, ultra inclusive, all inclusive. Yeah. All kind of fat all over the place. And people, Muslim, eh, will spend $2,500, $3,000. To go to these parties and you ask them, brother, excuse me, you know, we need, uh, we need a donation. We're doing some work in the masjid. Can you please give a contribution? Brother, excuse me, we're trying to build, you know, an orphanage. Brother, excuse me, we're trying to build a home for battered sisters. Brother, excuse me, we're trying to raise money to, uh, to help uh, send students to study. Brother, excuse me, can you give a donation for this? Can you give a donation, donation for that? And you know what they say? Well, you always want money, yeah? Every time we say Ali, 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 wa donation. Okay, fine, no problem. If you love not given, then the love for not given will enter the heart and it captivates the heart. So the love for given will never be in the heart. And you will be written down as, you know what? A stingy man. That is what you will, the angels will write you down. This man is a real stingy man, boy. Imagine you are being called stingy man on the day of Kiamat. Everybody turn around, so. He's a boy. You will be called by what you were famous for in the world with. You will be called by that. You understand? You go to these same people. And I asked them for a contribution for the masjid. I mean, how you pay the light bill? How is the light bill paid? People have to contribute. The masjid have to clean. You have to do so many. Yeah, people just feel, people just feel that the masjid running on its own. People just feel that the masjid running on its own. But to take out some money monthly and give it to the houses of Allah, whose house are you contributing to? No, but people aren't doing that. But they rather go and spend three thousand dollars to go a party. Three thousand dollars to go to a party. And hey, watch me. If they get a ticket worth two thousand dollars, they will end up paying three thousand dollars to get in by the door. That is how far they are willing to go. Until that time, Allah will seize them suddenly with such a severe punishment. Such a severe punishment. What a horrible way to end your life. 
you left this world in the disobedience of Allah. Allah caused you to live to the evening. Allah gave you life until the evening. You left your home with the intention of disobeying Allah. And the angel of that seized your soul whilst you were happy disobeying your Lord. What excuse will we give to Allah on the day of Qiyamah? Where will we be on the day of Qiyamah? How important Haya is in our lives? How important is morality in our life? How important is decency in our life? You understand what the Prophet is saying now? When morality, when modesty leaves your heart, Iman leaves with it. Iman leaves with it. When morality leaves, Iman leaves. Now you can do whatever you want to do. My dear brothers, I mean, daily you see so much happening in the Ummah. Daily you see so much happening in the Ummah. Sometimes it's happening in our families. Sometimes it's happening in our neighborhood. With Muslims. The non-Muslims, they don't know. That's their culture. That's their way of life. But for a Muslim, Allah has given you guidance. What excuse will we make on the day of Qiyamah? What excuse can we make? For the mothers, you have a responsibility towards your girls. You have a responsibility towards your children. For the fathers, you have a responsibility towards your children. For the leaders in the community, you have a responsibility towards the community. That's why I say, I don't care. I, I, when I, I talk, I don't talk to make friends with people. Enough. If you vex, that's your business. If you are happy, that's your business also. You understand? I don't speak to make friends or get a pat on your shoulder and say, great speech. I don't talk for that. You understand? Because you dust things under the carpet, you know what will happen? A lot of roaches will come under the carpet. And before you know it, you have to evacuate. We've been doing that for long Sweeping this under the carpet and sweeping that under the carpet and always hiding this and hiding that. No! Muslims are the downfall of the religion of Allah. Don't blame the Jews and don't blame the Christians and don't blame the government. Stop pointing fingers at other people. We are the ones who are destroying the religion of Allah. We are the ones who are doing it. Stop pointing fingers all over the place and blaming people. Stop it. We need to stop that. We are the ones who are doing this. If we follow simple guidance, that's all you have to do. But when you don't do that, then the unbelievers will look at you and say, hey, and all the Muslims are not supposed to do that? How come are they doing that? I say, well, take an hour break today. Now. I mean, tomorrow I'll start back. You have Muslims who just do that? Are you praying today? Nah, I'm feeling a little tired. I'll go, I'll go pray tomorrow. Imagine Muslims that say that. You got up in the morning of Ramadan. You have to fast today. I fast three days straight. You know how you know that was for me? May Allah Rabbul Aizza uh, give us an understanding of what has been said here this afternoon. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring benefit out of this gathering. May Allah Rabbul Aizza protect our hearts. May Allah protect our hearts. May Allah give us the ability to protect ourselves. May Allah unify our hearts. May Allah unify the Ummah. Wherever the Ummah is, may Allah unify the Ummah. And we need to make dua and ask Allah. We need to beg from Allah for the Ummah. The Ummah is in peril. It's in peril. Any side you turn, you're seeing something distasteful. Happening to them is just today. A brother was telling me about you know Lakabi Masjid and nobody and police coming and walking around in the carpet and Lakabi Masjid nobody could pray. That is Islamic. Is that right? Is that a correct thing to do? If 
you have a difference of opinion, if you have a difference of opinion, we have ways to deal with that. You think difference of opinion didn't happen anytime with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yeah. But how did he deal with it? But don't lock up the house of Allah. Don't throw out people from the house of Allah. I mean, of course, if they deserve throwing out, throw them out. You understand. But we need to continue to ask Allah to unify our hearts. When the unbelievers see this, do you think that will make them more inclined to Islam? You think that will make them more inclined to becoming Muslim? We ask Allah to bring benefit out of this gathering. May Allah Rabbul Azza make our last actions on the face of this earth be the most pleasing actions to Him. We ask Allah to bless us with His Jannah and we seek refuge in Allah from the fire of Jahannam. Akulu kawli hadha astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa lisayil al muslimin. Fastaghfiruhu inna hu huwa al ghafur rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Allahu Allahu Allahu.